Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I thought in this video I would go through and create kind of a Christmas holiday season kind of feel to a photo that isn't necessarily from that season. One of the things I love to do in photo editing is just go in and do different fun creative kind of stuff and just try to use your imagination to come up with something that didn't exist. I'm totally okay with that. In fact, I embrace it. I like it quite a bit. That's for me a lot of the fun of editing is just trying to create something. And so that's what I'm doing in this video and in this photo. I actually did a similar video to this a couple of years ago with the previous version of Luminar, like Luminar 3 or Luminar 4, I don't remember, but uh, it's been a long time. I thought I might come back and revisit this subject. So here's a blue hour shot in London. And what I want to do, as I said, is just create kind of a holiday flair, make it feel like a wintry Christmas image. There's a couple of key things I do to do that. The first thing, of course, is I'm going to make this black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and click Convert to Black and White. Now that I've done that, one of the things I want to do is first uh, zoom in. I want to get in and um, I want to keep the color in the uh, clock face here in Big Ben. So I'm going to go into the Masking menu and I'm going to click Erase. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to do this with my mouse. I'm basically erasing the black and white conversion from the clock face and leaving it in the rest of the image. And so that's going to allow me to have that yellow in the clock face come through, I guess I should say, while losing the color in the rest of the image. So let me tidy this up and then I'll show you. Okay, so there's that. Now I did this with a brush mask. You could also do it with a radial mask, which actually would draw a perfect circle. However, I could never... <laughs> I was playing around with it. I couldn't quite get the radial mask to look exactly how I wanted it to look. So I went with a brush mask. You've got options is the point. Now that I back up, you can kind of see I've got a black and white photo. I kept the yellow color in the um, clock face there, a big bin. Let me show you the before and after. Let me hit the right key. There it is. There's before. I also cropped and took out some spots before starting the video. There's the base photo. There's the current photo. So I've got that in place. And while I'm here, I actually need to copy this mask. And then I'm going to go over to color and I'm going to go in here. I want to bump up the saturation and vibrance, but I only want it in the clock face because you see it's impacting the rest of the photo. So I'm going to go ahead and hit paste mask, but I actually need to invert that because remember the black and white filter is impacting the entire photo. Here I would just want to impact the clock face. So I need to hit invert and there we go. Let me hide the mask and there you go. So what I've basically done is just really popped that yellow color in the clock face. So there it is before doing this and there it is now. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go over to light and do some kind of basic stuff. I'm going to add some smart contrast. I'm going to go to about a 40 on that. I'm going to pull down the highlights a little bit. It's a little bit bright there, so maybe like a negative 35, but I do want to lift the shadows because it's too dark and I want to have better visibility across the image. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to go to 50. So something about like that. So that's allowed me to kind of balance the light a little bit. And then speaking of balancing the light, here's where I'm going to use Accent AI and I'm going to go to about a 50. And again, this is creating better visibility across the image. Accent AI, as you probably know, does a number of other things, but I think it works fine here. So I'm not worried about kind of messing up the photo, for lack of a better word. Now what I want to do is actually reduce structure across most of the image, uh, which would be basically the sky and the water. So I'm going to do like a negative 80 or something. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just paint this in. I've got paint. I need to increase the size of my brush. And now let me go ahead and just paint this across the sky and the water. Okay, got something like that. Doesn't have to be exact. That's okay. Just wanted to smooth out some of those areas of the photo and basically just create a little bit of a softer look. So, so far, you know, we've made a lot of uh, headway on this photo. There it is uh, so far. But what I want to do is add that holiday flair. And there's no better way to do that than to put snow into a photo. Hey, it didn't have snow. I would love to see London in the snow, but I've yet to do that. But today, I'm going to make it look like I have. So I'm going to go to Texture. I'm going to go to Texture Selection. And then I've got a snow overlay. Um, I just found this uh, by Googling a free snowflake overlay like download. So I did this a number of years ago. I don't really remember where I got it. But if you just Google that, you could find multiple snowflake overlays. This is the one that I'm going to use. Now, one of the cool things about textures is that there's blend modes, which impact how the texture is blending with the photo below it. I'm going to go to screen blend mode and I'm actually going to increase the opacity. So like a 75, 76, and I'm going to increase the brightness as well to about the same. Yeah, I go to about a 75, 76, something like that. And so here you can see I basically stuck snow on top of my London photo. So if I turn this off, 
There it is before, and there it is now. The uh, blend mode is a really big deal when you're doing things like this because if you look at the snowflake overlay, it's basically a black background with, of course, white snow that is lit up uh, in the foreground. And so you need to blend away that black background and screen mode does that really well. So now that I've done that and while I'm in local masking, I'm gonna go ahead and add a basic local mask. And this will be across the entire photo. I'm just gonna pull the highlights down, something about like that, maybe negative 75. They were just getting a little bit bright. So if you look at the before, there it is a little bit brighter in this guy. And after, there it is just a little bit better balance in the light, which I like. And now that I've done that, I've got a couple of wrap up things to do. Actually, I think I'm gonna go to Accent AI and maybe bump that a little bit more. Kind of experimenting here. Yeah, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to about 80, much higher than I would normally do. But hey, we're making things up. It actually works in this image, so that's all good. Um, what I want to do here is basically go into toning, and this is something you probably, if you've watched. Um, my previous videos, I do this on a lot of my monochrome photos, and that is I just create kind of a silvery blue, blue look. And so saturation is going to be around a 50, and uh, the hue is going to be like a 232. I'll just type it in. There you go. That's highlights, shadows. Let me just type in a 50. There we go. And uh, not red, but go to 232, which is in the blue. And there you go. All I've basically done is just take taking it from a true classic black and white to a kind of a, a tinted monochrome where it's a little bit blue. In fact, I might pull back the saturation a little bit on both of these. Uh, that was shadows. Let me get into highlights. I don't want to overdo it, but for, for some reason, especially if it's a later in the, uh, you know, kind of blue hour, which this was in the beginning, um, and a monochrome, that kind of bluish tint works for me. It just feels like it goes with that time of day, and it also, for me, just goes with monochromes. And so I've got toning in place. And really the last thing I'm going to do is just a, a slight vignette. So pop that in there, maybe a tiny bit of inner light. And, uh, you know, just kind of experiment here with what I want to do. I do want to increase feathering and roundness. I think I'm going to go a little bit negative there, maybe a little tighter on the vignette. Something about like that. A little bit of inner light, which is nice. And that's it. So here's the vignette before and after just tightens it up a little bit in fact i'm going to pull back slightly i don't want to overdo it maybe something about like that and that's it my friends simple and easy basically selective color tinted monochrome with a snow overlay gave me a nice christmas look and it, i think it really draws your eye i mean big ben you know it's kind of slightly off center the bridge leads to it the buildings from the left lead to it and so i think you're going to be drawn to big ben anyway i wanted that little yellow pop on the uh, face of the clock to really just draw your attention and then the snow of course to really make it Christmassy. So if you look at the before and after, kind of a boring blue hour shot. Um, I mean, you know, reasonably boring, nothing super exciting about it, but kind of a basic shot. And now I think something a bit more fun and artistic and it was quick and easy to do. Selective color with monochromes, a little tinting, and of course the snow I think makes it. So that's it, I hope it gives you some ideas. You can do something like this, send it to your friends, share it on Facebook, whatever. It's just a fun holiday experiment to do. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. And until then, my friends, take care of yourselves and adios.